Welcome to our lecture online. Now that we understand how to deal with the hyperbolic cosine and hyperbolic sine functions, we're ready to handle the catenary. So here we have what we call a hanging cable between two towers. Notice the two towers are 200 feet or 200 meters apart, doesn't matter if it's feet or meters. And we have an equation that describes that actual curve of that cable. So y equals some constant, in this case 150, type the times the hyperbolic cosine of x over 150. And now what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the length of that cable. And so we use the same technique with the equation that we have here that we're not familiar with. Well, what we need to do, of course, is we need to find the uh, derivative of the function. And then after we find the derivative of the function, we square it, we plug it in here, find the arc length, so we know the technique. But when we look at that, what should we do with that? Well, we want to convert it into this format. We want to write it as y is equal to 150 times the quantity e to the x over 150 plus e to the minus x over 150 all divided by 2. So that's the equivalent of the hyperbolic cosine. Now 150 divided by 2 is 75, so we end up with y, which is equal to 75 times the quantity e to the x over 150 plus e to the minus x over 150. And of course that now is equal to my function of x. Now we're ready to take the derivative of that. And so we have f prime of x is equal to 75 times e to the x over 150 plus, oh, not minus, it's going to be minus, because we have a negative there, minus e to the x over 150, times the derivative of the exponent, which is 1 over 150, so that goes over here. And then you realize that, ha, ah, f prime of x can be written as 1 half times the quantity e to the x over 150 minus e to the, oh, that should be minus x over 150, forgot the minus there, like this. And then, of course, when we square it, we get the following. f prime of x squared is equal to 1 quarter times, so that would be e to the x over 75, because we multiply the exponent by 2. And that gives us a minus 2 plus e to the x over 75. All right. Because we multiply these two together, we get minus 1, double that, we get minus 2. And now we're ready to plug that into our equation right here. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to find the length, which is equal to, and we're going to integrate from x equals 0 to x equals 100 and double that. So that gives us 2 times the integral from 0 to 100. That makes things a little bit easier. Let's write it a little bit bigger. Uh, times the square root of 1 plus a quarter times, and we have e to the x over 75 minus 2 plus e to the minus x over 75 times dx. Now that looks quite a bit like the ones we've done before when we had the hyperbolic cosine. And notice that 1 quarter times the negative 2, that's minus 1 half, added to the 1 that becomes plus 1 half, and then we factor out a quarter again, so we end up with L is equal to 2 times the integral from 0 to 100 times the square root of 1 quarter times e to the x over 75 plus 2 plus e to the minus x over 75 times dx. And now you realize, we should realize that this can be written as the square of a binomial, where this now becomes plus 2 instead of negative 2, so this becomes a plus instead of a negative. And so this cannot be written as L is equal to 2 times the integral from 0 to 100 times the square root of, well, the 1 quarter can come out, that would be 1 half, which is 2 over 2, that negates that 2. And then here we end up with x to the e to the x over 150 plus e to the x, negative x over 150 times dx. And squared, because that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to write it as a binomial squared. And now that I've done that, that negates the, uh, the radical. So we have L is equal to the integral from 0 to 100 times 
e to the x over 150 plus e to the minus x over 150 all times dx. Well, let's see here, we do need a proper differential. We need a 1 over 150 uh, dx, so let me write that a little bit over like this. So I'm going to write this as dx. We do need a 1 over 150 to be able to integrate that, which means we also need to multiply times 150 like this. Otherwise, we can integrate. So now we're ready to integrate. So we have L is equal to 150 times, we have e to the x over 150 plus, oh, now that becomes a minus again. So minus e to the minus x over 150 evaluated from 0 to 100. Okay, when I plug in the upper limit, L equals 150 times e to the 100 divided by 150 is 2 thirds minus e to the minus 2 thirds minus when I plug in the lower limit, now e to the 0, that is 1, minus e to the 0, which is 1, and that cancels out. So I don't have to worry about that part. So now we have. The length of that cable is equal to 150 times e to the oh, times e to the two thirds minus e to the minus two thirds, and of course it means more if we grab a calculator and actually find the value we're looking for, an approximate value. If I can find my calculator, there it is. It's hiding. So we have two divided by three, and that's e to the x. And I'll write some intermediate values here. So 150 times, I get 1.9477. 1.9477 minus, so we have uh, 2 divided by 3, put a negative in front of that, take e to the x, so we end up with 0 0.5134, like this. Okay, so now that's equals and times 150, and we end up with the length is approximately 215. Now that's either feet or meters, whatever the units are that we used in here, but that's how we find the length of a hanging cable, also called a catenary. And again, notice the, the technique, we end up having a hyperbolic cosine written as an exponential function, and then we'll go to that same process like we did before. A little bit more complicated because of the more complex numbers, but the method is exactly the same as before, so that is how it's done.